Here is Brian with the translation of the Drops of Inspiration by Ricardo Melo with the theme, The Paths of Love. Hello, my dear friends. Good morning. Dear friends, an important question when you think about the things you want. Do you think about your wish based on your needs, on what you lack? I mean, the energy of lack, of need, is what motivates you to want something or even being close to someone. Or can you vibrate in the intensity of love? My friends, this is very serious. There's a very big difference between wanting something from life based on need and this energy of lack, of caring and going in search of something in life based on the energy of love. It seems the same to many people. Indeed, by the way, this is a very common confusion we make. But Jesus in the extraordinary gospel that he left us showed us that those ways are very different. Mammon's way is very different from the sacred self's way. When we are searching for things, wishing to achieve goals and aims in order to satisfy our ego's wishes, we usually feel more and more enthusiastic as long as we earn something. And then when you get what you want, you get excited and want more. And want more and want more. Was never faced this. You work, work, progress in one area of the business and suddenly you want more. And then you work, 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 progress and suddenly you want more. Isn't it like this? It's an endless desire, people say. I want to get married to be happy. They meet someone and get married, but they want more to be happy. I want to have a child, and then they have a son. They're not happy yet. And they have the need to have more. Think about it. If it's not like that, my child must grow up, and the child grows up. Are these people happy? No, not yet. One day he'll get married and give me grandchildren. People want more. Short story, they'll never be happy because they always focus on what they don't have. Their wish is always focused, my friends, on what they want to increase just for simply increasing. Got it? It's serious. This is a bottomless pit. The energy that we create by pursuing our goals, seeking things and situations based on this kind of feeling that isn't even a feeling but a sense of lack. I miss someone. I've got rid of money. I lack health. I like being recognized by the people around me. It's an energy of misery, for God's sake. This emotional misery energy has nothing to do with spiritual abundance that Jesus showed us. Absolutely not. Abundant people from the spiritual point of view know that they're millionaires from the moment they awaken their current level of consciousness. When we feel connected directly to the Father, when we recognize our Christ seed and we start seeing with the luck of love, absolutely everything changes. When we want something, my friends, based on a loving heart, on the love's essence, on the love's core, we're talking about the perspective of something that fulfills you not for what you achieve or in order that you can have more, but for the human being that you become while you move on to reach something. Can you tell the difference? This changes everything. Usually people still set their minds on what accomplishes them, on things that they'll achieve or on a material mind stone. In this new year, I'll do this and that. Spiritualized, people think. In this new year, I want to become a happier and lighter, better, more grateful human being while I progress in my job, while I build any social activity. The most important is the focus on the being's growth. Why am I mentioning this to you? This is the time, my friends. This is the moment when many people are setting their inner compasses, their inner GPS for the coming year. That's the time when... Many people write down their goals, set deadlines. It's being set on the media and social gatherings. What do you want to do for the new year? What do you want to put on your list? Isn't it like that? And the problem is that for every 10 goals, at least for ordinary people who haven't awakened yet, maybe nine are linked to ego issues. These people didn't notice yet, but they're still prisoners of wishes that will make them have more wishes when they achieve something and they will have more wishes. In short, they won't feel happy. In fact, we should want the water that Jesus told about to the Samaritan woman. Do you remember? Woman, if you drink of the water that I have to offer you, you'll never be thirsty again. He talked to the Samaritan woman who walked to drink water from Jacob's well. But he meant the water of love. This water quenches thirst. Why? Because you fulfill yourself in every step you take. And this... What I wish you this new year. Maybe you won't fulfill yourself on the cure of your illness, but while you're sick, you'll live each day in a lucid, sober, and serene way. Your fulfillment may not come from a promotion, professional growth, and more money. 
on the contrary. Maybe it'll come exactly from the daily struggle so that you can pay each bill with dignity and you can take care of your family with affection, with concern, without giving up. Maybe your greatest achievement doesn't come from meeting the great love of your life, or from having a happy stereotypical family that's in the minds of many people about a happy family. Maybe the great achievement of your soul comes in the physical moments of loneliness in which your soul learns how to be in solitude, which is quite different in touch with your sacred self, setting yourself in free from pseudo-needs. These are deep issues. There's a big difference between living from the ego and living from your sacred self. What's your choice? Of course, I wish you the best. That was what Jesus offered us. Happy are those who can understand this.